And we're live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Code Mentor Office Hours. Um, my name is Joyce, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, there's a questions tab underneath this video, so feel free to ask questions throughout this broadcast. You can also vote for other people's questions, and we'll try and get to all of them. We have quite a few on the list already. So, yeah. Um, today, I'm really excited to be here with Teresa and Aaron from Hacker Nest. Um, Teresa is the engineering product manager at Hacker Nest, and Aaron is the visual designer. Um, so, to start us off, um, for people who may not who may be unfamiliar, can you tell us a little about the work that Hackerness does and what Hackerness is? Uh, sure. We are a nonprofit that builds inclusive tech communities around the world. Um, we're doing that through social events and hackathons that are socially beneficial. And we have um, hackathons such as Dementia Hack and Hack Equality, Hack for Equality. Um, we aim to create a welcoming and down-to-earth social events and hackathons for anyone to can join and make friends. Great, that sounds pretty interesting. Um, can you tell us a little about your respective roles at Hack Hacker Nest and what sort of you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, sure. So I manage the development and product ideation of Hacker Nest projects alongside the CTO and work closely with Aaron on design. Um, since we are a nonprofit organization, our teams tend to be smaller and we often have to put on different hats. So my background is in software engineering and I'm a full stack developer. So besides code review and management roles, I also have to code and test parts of the projects myself. Okay. And Aaron, what about you? Yeah, for myself, I handle UI and UX design for web development. And of course, I work with Teresa in our development team. Um, I usually work on sketches, wireframes, and mockups for web UI design. Mm -hmm. um, and outside of that, I also work on other digital materials for marketing and sales or Hackernest. Great. Um, so let's maybe go back in your careers a little bit. And um, can you guys talk about how you sort of got into this field? And what um, did you study this really something related in school? Um, sure. So for me, I think I was heavily influenced by my family growing up. Um, they all happened to be engineers, so they were very encouraging in my choices. And I was a really curious kid who loved to re reverse engineer things from mechanical pencils and appliances. I think my drove my parents crazy. Um, I loved puzzles and grew up as a gamer. Um, so when I had my first computer, I started making websites and looking at source codes. Um, it was really interesting to me that you could write a few lines and see the results almost instantaneously on the screen. Um, so I was really interested in learning how computers worked. And so I guess it felt natural for me to choose this field. It was only, um, so I never realized a gender gap until I first walked into class in first year. And I remember seeing that I was one of three girls in the class and that actually made me feel somewhat isolated. Mm -hmm. um, what um, about for you? Me, yeah. yeah. Um, for me, I always liked art and design, um, technology and games, but I didn't plan on working in tech industry to be, uh, in the beginning. Um, I got into tech as I started working at a game studio and I didn't start as a designer, but I actually started as a QA tester. Um, but working in that kind of environment, I realized there's a chance to combine all things that I love, like design and technology. So I started working my way over to more uh, design-related work. So from there, I continued to explore and learn more about design, and specifically UI and UX design, which got me to where I am now at Hackernest. Okay, um, so uh, Teresa, you briefly mentioned gender just now. Um, are sort of gender related issues something that you have actually experienced personally in your career? Because we do hear a lot about how you know, tech industry is so biased towards men or there's so many men, but has, is this something that you think has affected your own career path? Yeah, I definitely think, I mean, so growing up, you know, family's really encouraging and it didn't seem like there would be an issue like it was just something oh you love learning about computers and you love to code so you're you learn about it you go to school for it um but i think there are less female developers in general and i remember when i first started finding work it was 
very intimidating for me because I remember I walk into the office and for an interview, past all these developers who were men, and the people who interviewed me were men. Like I never had an interview where there was at least one woman, feel like developer sitting in. So it felt like chances of working there would be slim, and I'd feel nervous before the interview even started. So I think like that didn't really help my confidence or like going into interviews. I feel like. Oh, okay, like feel kind of awkward, and you know, yeah. So interviews didn't start out like yeah, that great because it, you know, it takes some time. Because when they ask questions, like start asking interviewing questions, then you know you're more focused on on, um, I guess, answering it. But in the beginning, like when you first walk in, just like, oh, you know, like it's all guys, or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Erin, what about you? Yeah, somewhat similarly, when I was working at um, some of the tech startup companies, um, I did notice that there aren't as many women in the field as men. And I rarely saw female developers. And actually, I was delighted to know that Teresa was in our team when I first joined, because that was amazing to have a <laughs> female developer in the team, mm -hmm. because usually um, I would be the only female. Uh, mm -hmm. in a development team and I'm not even I'm not a developer I as a designer I was the only female and that was in a way a little bit difficult because it's sometimes hard to get my voice heard mm -hmm. from coming from a woman's perspective yeah yeah um so have either of you ever felt like um I guess that you were sort of like an imposter during your career because you know sometimes I guess I've heard some people in the where they'll say that their male colleagues will question their abilities, or they'll question sort of their opinions during meetings. Like you just said, it's hard to get heard. So, have you ever experienced this for yourself? And sort of, what would be your tip for overcoming this? Um, for me personally, uh, even though I was working with design, because I'm working with a de development team, there was a lot of uh, tech-related languages, lingos that I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you feel like, you sometimes feel like imposter because you you feel like you should know all these things, but yet you don't. Um, but I realized that you have to acknowledge that sometimes there are things that you just don't know yet, but that's that's actually a great, great opportunity to um, learn new things. Uh, you can just be proactive and ask for help from people around you because I'm sure they'll they'll be more than willing to help you to uh, figure out what what they're talking about, what you have to work on. And if if not that, you can go out and learn more about it yourself. Yeah. Um, Teresa, did you have anything to add to this? Um, yeah, I think that I guess I'm not. Um, I didn't feel as much, feel as much. not as an imposter because um, I was always in the field, like school and everything I was learning about it. But it definitely, um, there are definitely like challenges where, you know, um, colleagues might question your ability sometimes. And I think like it's just important because it's such a skill based kind of job. So if you are given, um, you know, like a project or a section or something to work on and, you know, you do your job, they can't really question and say like, oh, this doesn't work because, you know, if you solve the problem and it works, it, it just, you know, you, you solved it, right? Um, so I think in the beginning, there's always kind of, or there's some times that colleagues might question your abilities. Um, yeah, so that was kind of, but but very rarely, I think when you are already in the workplace, usually um, doesn't happen as often. Mm -hmm. um, can you guys think of any, I guess, specific instance where um, gender might have played into, I guess, maybe a colleague question your ability or any other gender related issue and how you dealt with that? Do you have anything, Teresa? <laughs> <laughs> like, was there any specific instance that sort of stands out in your mind from your career? and how you would deal with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, deal with, I guess, um, like gender related issues or what kind of? 
maybe just like if you have an example of some something you dealt with in the past that was related to gender. It's okay, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so what would you recommend? Um, I guess despite these challenges, like what do you do to make sure that you stay on top of your game and you keep learning? Well, I think you mentioned like it's important to keep learning. Um, and I think that programming jobs are competitive in general. And I find that being confident in a union high is definitely important. Um, so for myself, like I knew I had to change my mentality a little because in the beginning I feel really intimidated, intimidated going into interviews. Um, so it was very difficult, but it's not impossible. Like for me, I would um, like I like programming so much that it would often work on projects during my own time. So it helped with my confidence, you know, when I solved the difficult problem. And at the same time, I had a deeper understanding of the material. So if it ever comes up in interviews or, you know, at the workplace, like I already knew how to solve it. So it definitely helped. Because um, one of the things like, I keep on talking about confidence is because I found like when my peers, um, we had the same level, we had the same experience. And I found like, I would look at, you know, like junior developer jobs. And then they would look at like full, you know, developer, like software engineer jobs. And like, you know, I, I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure it was a confidence thing because when I ask uh, my male peers about, you know, like this job, because if you look at the qualifications, it asks for like five years experience or something like that. And we just came out of school with a co-op, it's only like one year, right? Um, but they're just like, yeah, no, like, you know, they fit like two of the two of the 10 criteria, they can do it. But then like, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but for me, unless like, at least in the beginning, I would just like, if I only fit two out of 10, I'd be like, oh, maybe it's like, I'm not qualified. Yeah, but it takes some like kind of changing our mindset. It's like, hey, you know, like a bunch of people like they would apply for it. Like, you know, why not? Yeah, for sure. I, I agree that confidence is very important and um, just trying it as well. I mean, there's nothing to lose in a way uh, when you're applying to jobs, for example. Um, and we already mentioned learning, keep learning as well. But um, I feel like you just have to keep proving that you are willing to learn and adapt to do your job. And as long as you enjoy what you do and you have the desire to get better at what you do, um, you will you will just have to continue uh, learning and improve yourself. And especially in tech industry, the tools and technology itself is always evolving and changing. And I realize even for design tools, there's always something new, always something better, always something people are talking about. So it's very important to stay current and um, just uh, keep on learning. You can never stop learning. Yeah. Um, we have a question from a viewer, Lauren. Um, she's saying that one of the issues she deals with is asking for help from male colleagues. And she's saying that they tend to sort of start diving into the work and actually trying to do it themselves as opposed to mm -hmm. explaining it to her. Um, so have, have you had this happen to you guys and sort of how would you recommend handling this situation? I, well, at least for myself, I think if I had a question or problem, usually, I haven't had anyone just diving in and trying to solve the problem for me rather than explaining it. But I think if that does happen, you know, you should kind of let him know right away instead of letting him like actually finish the problem or solving it for you. I think it would be, you know, if you explain it and it's like, oh, you know, you ask the question and, you know, you actually want to know how to solve it on your own. And like, it's great that he's helping you solve it but you know you actually like him to explain it and then you solve it and then he can like he can give you feedback on you know how you solved it i think it's just like a learning process and maybe like the male colleague doesn't realize like maybe he thought you meant you need help here i'll help you kind of thing right like maybe he doesn't realize like oh you want to learn on your own you just need some kind of guidance or feedback not like 
full, like, you know, solving the problem for you. Yeah, I agree. Um, and also, I, I guess I had something similar happen to me, more so because maybe I'm not a developer and they think I don't know anything about tech. Um, but there are instances where I have to ask developers in my team for certain like clarification on certain things. Um, if that's the case, I would say just approach them saying, hey, this is the concept that I want to learn more about. Where can I get resources? How can I um, learn more about this? Rather than, hey, this is a problem I don't know how to solve. Um, what are the ways that I can figure this out myself? Maybe um, just uh, change um, the way you're asking a little bit and maybe you will have a better result. Great. Yeah, um, I think that's really great advice. Um, let's see. Um, so do you think the tech community in general, um, because we have we have seen a lot of, for example, like girls who code, women who code, or like, you know, initiatives from the UN or from the White House about female developers in general or women in tech in general. So do you think the tech community is doing enough to address this issue? And um, do you have any suggestions on what you think can be improved? So I think that the tech community is trying to address the issue. Um, and But I think it is something we would have to reevaluate in five years to see if there's any real impact. Like for me, I think it's hard to say right now because I don't really see an increase in female developers in the workplace like at this moment. Um, but I think that the tech community is raising awareness about the issue and that obviously helps. Um, I would suggest the tech community to look at the root of the problems because, you know, maybe there are not a lot of female developers because they're brought up not to be interested in tech or tech was never accessible to them. And if it's the workplace, maybe look at a way to have um, blind job interviews. So it is um, gender and race neutral and you're simply interviewed based on knowledge. And I think that would be really interesting to see the effect. Yeah, I, I do agree um, that the raised awareness is very great. Um, there are more and more groups and events and networking opportunities for women in tech, um, which creates welcoming environment for women, which I think is great. But as Teresa said, even if we don't see the, the results right away, um, it's good that they're getting they they have more programs to get the girls in tech early on, because I feel like I wish I had that when I was growing up. <laughs> I I wish I, it, I wish it was introduced me to, as something that I can just play around with, just just try try out. So I think that's very great, um, and I feel that more mentoring program for women would also be a very um, good resources. And oh, I'm sure there are some out there, but uh, find because finding female mentor can be challenging sometimes, uh, some kind of a program that can met, match you with uh, mentors that would be very beneficial. So um, Teresa mentioned that um, when you were in university that you were in one of three girls and you know, a sea of guys. Um, do you have any tips for female students who might be going through the same thing where they might feel very alone and sort of in their department or in their class? Um, I think that like, even though you feel, I guess, isolated, um, I think that the guys are also intimidated by you as well. Um, Cause I, I found like, you know, some people maybe thought like, I didn't want to talk to them. So then they didn't talk to me kind of thing. And you just have to, you just have to approach them first if they don't approach you kind of thing. Um, and I feel like you have to, um, I mean, the program is, is definitely tough. It's, it's not uh, easy. And, you know, you shouldn't shy away from, you know, talking to your professors, talking to your peers and asking questions because, you know, I, I noticed like, my, um, my um, classmates, like, I guess the, the male um, peers, they would, ask questions in class and I was like I think in the first two years or even the first three years or two and a half years I was like 
I, I was scared to like ask questions, even though like, you know, I didn't understand one part of the material or something. And yeah, it, it's definitely easier if you just kind of kind of just go out there and ask your question. Um, because there are actually other people who probably doesn't know, you know, some material and they don't ask because they want to seem very confident that they know everything and all that stuff. But yeah, like once you ask the question, I think professors in general welcome it, you know, and and um, when they explain it to you, you have a deeper understanding and then it also helps the class. So I think it's like, you know, you have to come out of your shell a little bit because I mean, I, I'm pretty much like the, uh, I don't want to say typical, but kind of like I was really shy, introvert. I uh, like gaming. Like I don't like going out as much. I would play games on my computer, like on the weekends, like, you know, all nighter kind of thing. Like that's pretty much who I was. Um, so it was really hard for me to like, you know, come out of my shell, but mm -hmm. definitely I, I think, you need to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we also had a question from another viewer um, that was emailed in earlier, and she talked about um, how she's having some sort of miscommunication issues with her uh, manager. And her manager, um, I guess, not she. Well, from her perspective, her manager isn't sort of allotting her um, resources to get additional training. Um, since your question is a little specific, I'd like to sort of rework it to. Um, I guess, have you guys had any issues with communicating or miscommunicating with your own managers? And do you think um, gender has played a role in sort of the way you communicate or the way people communicate to you? Um, I think sometimes um, I find it hard to ask for something that I want. Um, maybe more generally, like some women have issues with like asking for what they want. I'm, I'm not sure if it's true, but in general, um, I feel like, um, sorry, I'm, <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to think. <laughs> so yeah, what I, what I want to say is um, I, I realize you have to ask. Um, you wouldn't, sometimes you, you wouldn't get it unless you actually like go out there and just communicate saying what you need to become better at what you're doing. And therefore, these are the resources that I want to um, get. And if you need support from your managers, uh, I feel like you have to just communicate it very well saying, hey, this is gonna make me a better employee for you as well. Like this is gonna help the company um, that way perhaps it's, it will be easier to uh, get support? Um, I think that if, um, like if a manager is kind of, um, if I feel like a manager is targeting me or, you know, not being inclusive, um, I would first, you know, maybe try to talk to them um, like one-on-one. -on -one. So maybe um, they'll realize, like maybe they didn't realize the problem, and then after the one-on-one, -on -one, they can kind of be more, um, like they actually can like see, hey, like, what, like, am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And they can kind of reflect on it. Um, but I think if it goes beyond that point, like they don't want to talk to you, they don't care, they just don't want to include you, then bring it to. You know, if your company has a HR um, to kind of bring it to them and have like a third party that just to see how you guys interact normal in your own like work environment. Because um, then it's harder to just say like, hey, like, I mean, yeah, it's harder for people to help you if um, because they have to be unbiased and, you know, help you that way. So I think if it is um, if it didn't escalate. Yeah, it's easier to talk one on one because manager might not realize, you know, he or she is, is targeting you, or you feel targeted, and maybe they will um, try to um, not do that anymore. Or if it's already escalated, then go to HR and a third party. Um, I think would be more like unbiased and you know, try to figure out the problem. Yeah. Um, great. Um, let's see. Okay. Um. So. 
Um, Teresa, you mentioned that, um, I guess, sort of something that companies can do to encourage um, more female developer hires would be blind interviews. Um, do you think there's anything else companies would do or anything that you know, CS departments or universities can do to encourage females to get into this role? I think, like, um, I know that we mentioned, I think it should be, like, you should encourage girls um, early because, you know, to, for them to even go to um, university or for computer science, like, that's, the, or that's, like, usually there's a huge, like, drop-off kind of thing. Like, yeah, so mm -hmm. I feel like if they're, if you encourage them early or from a childhood, like, um, you know, being a programmer, you can try it out, you know, it's fun or something like, and then they go to school for it. And then maybe um, having like, well, for me, I think professors were, they they tend to become mentors to um, rarely females, but then there's not a lot of females in the class, but they did treat everyone kind of equal. But then I, I still noticed like, hardly any like they hardly choose to be a mentor to the females mm -hmm. um i'm not sure why but i guess that would be like one of the things that would be um helpful if there are more female mentors mm -hmm. as well um yeah because most professors were male for me yeah. Yeah. i think just slow progress maybe on that front <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it sounds like we, we need just, we need more females in everywhere, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At a higher, higher position. Yeah. Yeah. To reach out. Um, so I guess, what would you say to women who feel like tech or, you know, pro being a programmer, being a developer is something that they just can't break into because of their gender? Um, I, well, I think that if tech is your passion and you know that it is the career um, you want, then don't let gender be an issue. Um, I know I mentioned this before, but um, confidence is so important and, and it might also help you break out of that mindset. Um, so work on some programming projects, join a few hackathons, and usually teams need all the help they can get. Mm -hmm. um, you'll realize that for the most part, if you're a great programmer and confident about your work, Others will respect you um, regardless of your gender. So I feel like you have to get out of the mindset that like, oh, maybe you can't break into tech industry because of your gender. Um, because I think that is like the first detriment because like if you feel, you know, oh, because I'm a female developer, I won't be able to make it in the tech industry. That already gives you like some kind of like block, you know, like, you have to kind of break that and, and get in, uh, you know, the first step for you to start building it up. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Aaron? Um, yeah, I would say don't be afraid to give it a try, even if you fear that you might not make it, per se, because coming from uh, outside of tech industry didn't go to the school or didn't um, didn't come from a path going for tech industry um, I feel like you would never know unless you try it and you can start from small doses like um, how you Teresa how Teresa mentioned about hackathons you can start from there you can attend um, networking events or uh, just reach out to someone already in the industry for advice or even like five minutes of their time for a coffee, per se, for example. Um, so even though it might look scary looking from outside, uh, there could be actually more people willing to help you. And there are more women like working in tech nowadays who can possibly help you and guide you and give you some feedback and support through the journey. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, in terms of opportunity-wise, um, Teresa, you mentioned that you know having male interviewers sort of really threw you a little bit, made you ex a little bit extra nervous, I guess. Um, do you actually think that in terms of finding work and opportunity, that your gender has affected you in any way? 
Yeah, I think um, I mentioned this earlier, but I felt like because um, I get, I felt like it was very intimidating to walk in to interview um, that were all men. Um, like, I also felt like um, that when I applied to jobs uh, or I looked at job postings, I mean, it was like, I always felt like I had to, I wasn't qualified, you know, for more senior roles or, or you know, even just like a full developer role um, in the beginning. I wasn't sure. And it seemed like, oh, you have to know everything and have like all these experience. And I found like that was a different, like I, I found, you know, the male peers, they didn't think that way. Like they just, then I'm not sure why that is. I'm not sure if it is gender related, but I just noticed that, you know, like, they seem very confident and they just, they would apply for it. They never seem intimidated that, you know, interview was um, men, like only men in the room kind of thing. Um, yeah. But I definitely felt like kind of nervous um, before interview even started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Aaron, did you have anything to add or? Um, yeah, similarly, when I was looking for a job, and going to a, a, an interview and uh, walking into a room and seeing a very male dominant like team then similar thing even before the interview i would i would fear i would think about would i fit into their culture of a company that would pop up in my head like from from the beginning um so those are i don't know if that's true or not if I actually start working there and just get to know the pe those people. But it was definitely um, like mental roadblock that I had to get over. Okay, yeah. Um, so besides, you know, the resources you've already mentioned, are there any additional resources or organizations or communities that you can share um, with other women in tech and that might help with their career path? Um, I think that, I guess, if you are looking for a job in tech, um, mock interviews and preparing for interview questions are um, important. There are a lot of um, online resources and books to use um, to practice for the interviews. And I find that networking is also important because there are already like not a lot of women in tech. Um, so I think networking for women and also you know, networking in general in the tech industry is important. Um, so if you find that going to tech events uh, to be too intimidating, then start in smaller groups. You know, there uh, we mentioned there are a lot of um, meetups that are women oriented, like Women Who Code, um, you know, Girls in Tech kind of thing, um, which is great if you want to know more about being a female developer, because then, you know, you can go to the events, um, and you can ask others who are currently in the field. And then, um, but I do recommend going to big conferences and join hackathons and meet other people in the tech industry in general, and not just stay in like a woman oriented, you know, event or group. Yeah. Yeah, I agree that it's good to start small, um, go to meetups, find. find Find out what local events are out there for you. Uh, hopefully, more female friendly or all inclusive. They can just feel that where you can feel welcome. Um, and um, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> um, yeah. And also, actually, uh, Hacker Nest is trying to do the same uh, by hosting social events that are that are just open to everyone and we see a lot of um, female population a lot of women in the events and it's really good to see everyone just um, talk and uh, make friends with each other yeah yeah definitely yeah use those local events yeah great um so i guess besides um the gender diversity issue um with your work with hacker nest has there any are there any sort of other glaring issues within the tech community that you think really need to be addressed or you think that really could be handled better by the tech community? Um, I think that, I guess um, 
diversity is a big issue. And I know one of the um, issues that we're talking about today is gender. But I think diversity in general in the tech industry is still not there. I mean, so our tech socials, we have more than 20 percent um, female members, you know, which is great. And we're lucky to have that. But I find even in that less than half are actually full time developers. Most of them are, you know, very interested in tech industry or, you know, they're um, a designer and, you know, like or some sort of like gaming graphic artist or something. But I think less than half are actually full time developers um, in their career. So um, I think that like and even if the tech industry has 50 percent um, male population and 50 percent female population, it's still not fully diverse. Mm -hmm. Like it's just gender diverse, but like actual diversity. I don't think the tech industry in, is there. Yeah. Hmm. Is there anything? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's um, the diversity oh, along with the diversity there. There are few barriers to entry, entry uh, into this field. And especially if you're coming from outside, um, it could be challenging for the newcomers. Mm -hmm. Um, coming from a different field to feel welcomed and become a part of the community because you might feel like everyone in tech industry already knows each other and you don't know how to get into <laughs> that scene and just to break in mm -hmm. um, but yeah um, that's something we can address better in the future okay um, sort of similar question from Lauren, a viewer. Um, she's asking sort of from a high level, how would you describe tech culture? And if you had to redesign it, what would you change? Okay. I guess maybe just um, the first part, like how would you describe tech culture to someone just sort of looking in from the outside? I think that the tech culture, it also depends on location, um, like which city, country um, you're from. And I think that it's, a lot of people think of it as, you know, like the Google, like, you know, like the, where everyone's um, like free food and, and free gym and, you know, it's like super fun to work and like, it's like popular popularized by you know I guess television and things like that. Um, but it's it's actually I mean when you're actually working in um, the tech industry, you don't really have time to enjoy all those luxuries. I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, like mm -hmm. you and also those are probably um, distractions. I, I think it's like they do that to pull in like recruits or, or like people into their company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of it is like, like popularized, but it's not really it, like, it's not actually like that across the field or like, it's not across every company. And I think it's like important to realize that. Yeah. yeah. I guess looking from outside, it can look like a kind of a private club as well. Um, <laughs> feels like when I when I went to some of the events um, earlier in my career, it felt like all the startup CEOs know each other. They all the developers know each other, and um, starting out just by myself felt like okay i don't know anyone i don't have any network so it was kind of um it was somewhat intimidating at first and i felt like i just kind of I, i'm interrupting their private party <laughs> mm -hmm. but um yeah obviously when you're inside it it could be different mm -hmm. um do you think there's sort of like a culture gap within tech startups and sort of bigger companies like, you know, Google and Facebook? 
I guess, especially in the perspective of um, women in the workplace. Culture gap? Yeah. Like there's, yeah, culture gap. Mm. Mm. I think, well, I only, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> like, I, I think that um, startups and Google and Facebook are similar because I think Google tries to still have that startup environment where it's like a campus like school. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that all companies in general do have like a, you know, there's like no gender inequality and things like that. Like they say it, but I'm not sure about the actual numbers when you look at how many employees are male and female or, you know, at least by division, like, if you look at engineering by itself as a division, how many women and men are actually in there. Um, but I think that like some, I think there's like a, maybe a culture gap between act, like a more like corporation companies and startup and, cause I think Google and startup companies are kind of similar, but then the more like, um, like IBM, I think they're more like, old school, like more like old fashioned in a way. Like they, I mean, they, they wouldn't have like that kind of culture where it's like free lunch and every day is like a hackathon or, or something going on, right? Like I think it's more um, solid like work hours and things like that, so yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, me, for I, me I, I mostly, mostly have, have um, <laughs> startup experience. <laughs> Sorry, I, I heard myself and yeah. Um, so at startups, I, I feel like what's good about it is that, uh, because it's usually a smaller team, you can try out different, um, different positions, let's say. Um, and that's exactly what happened to me, which I am grateful for because I started as a QA tester, but I was um, because I was willing to try out different things and learn other uh, other uh, skill sets, um, I could move on to a different position into design, which I actually have a passion for. Um, I feel like in startup, it's a little bit easier to do that, perhaps, mm -hmm. compared to bigger companies um, where your skill might be very specialized, your job might be very specialized and a little bit harder to switch to other positions. Um, so yeah. Yeah, great. Um, I don't want to take up too much of Teresa and Aaron's time. Um, if Are there any more audience questions? We've been answering some at the bottom. Um, if there aren't any other questions from the audience, um, I think we're going to wrap up. Um, before we go, I'd just like to say that um, Kakernes and CoVenture both have really great resources um, for just women in tech or just developers in general. So I'll be sending out some useful links um, after this broadcast ends. And this video will also be uploaded to YouTube. So feel free to share. Um, Teresa and Aaron, did you, did you guys have anything you wanted to add or anything you want to share with our audience? Um, so I just saw the, um, Laura recommended the tech interview book, Cracking yeah. the Coding Interview. So yeah. that is definitely a really good um, book if you're um, looking into a job um, and so like she also well the the author um, is a female um, developer and she's a CEO of Career Cup which is also a really good resource um, to practice questions um, there's also Hacker Rank which is um, like it's one of those like anonymous like there's um, challenges and and even like hackathon that you can do during your own time and even from companies so then um, you can like go and you know do some solve some problems and if you get noticed by the companies then you get interviewed or you know but at least that first step is anonymous like they don't know if you're male or female kind of thing um, so yeah that was a really good recommendation yeah. by Lauren <laughs> <laughs> um, Aaron, was there anything you want to add? Uh, well, just just to wrap up what we were talking about, um, even if you even if you are a little bit scared to uh, start working in tech, 
give it a try. <laughs> give it a try. Ask for help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Teresa and Aaron, for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for watching this broadcast. Um, so that's it for today's office hours. Um, join, join us next time. Take care. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.